who knew she sells seashells was actually inspired by a real woman her story is fascinating you may have heard the popular difficult to pronounce tongue twisters she sells seashells by the seashore which for best effect should be said aloud three times quickly but what you probably didn't know is that it's based on the life of one of the most remarkable yet seemingly overlooked women of European history Mary Anning this incredible woman was born in England's southern coastal town of Lyme Regis in 1799 they were tough times back then and of her nine siblings only her brother Joseph survived with her into adulthood even as a baby moreover it was obvious that Anning was destined to live an extraordinary life in the year 1800 when she was only one year old a deadly storm arrived on the coast before the group Anning was with could seek proper shelter a lightning bolt struck and immediately killed three people miraculously the infant Anning survived despite the rumor that one of those left dead was the woman holding her and as Anning grew up the townsfolk attributed her energetic and clever nature to the lightning strike although Anning's father Richard worked as a cabinet maker he spent his free time collecting and selling ancient fossils that he found along the cliffs overlooking the beach indeed seafloor deposits of around 180 million years old make up the Jurassic cliffs of much of England's coast even today tourists continue to explore Lyme Regis for the opportunity to discover their own fossils from the region curiously these relics of a time long gone would come to play a central role in Anning's life it all started when her father began to take Anning along on his fossil collecting trips unfortunately for the family disaster struck in 1810 when Anning's father died at the age of 44 and the family was left in debt and poverty lacking the skills to continue the cabinetry business Anning's mother decided instead to pursue the fossil selling hobby as a full-time money-making venture don't let the tongue twister fool you though the little Anning family business was serious work in the winter months for example the cliffs were prone to landslides indeed in 1833 Anning lost her dog Trey to such a catastrophe even still despite the danger freshly exposed cliff slides offered the best hunting ground for fossils and Anning learned much about the craft of being a fossilist during the next 10 years while her mother worked on selling her discoveries to keep the family afloat in 1811 meanwhile the 12 year old Anning made her first major discovery the world's first complete skeleton of an ichthyosaurus a 200 million year old reptile that resembles modern day dolphins it was a big achievement for a low-born girl with no formal education thanks to Anning's unquestionable ability museums scientists and aristocrats all sought to purchase her curious fossil finds however even today many of Anning's fossils in museums are under other names as only donated relics at the time received proper recognition but her discoveries earned her fame regardless in 1823 then she added another world first to her name by unearthing a complete skeleton of a plesiosaurus an 11 and a half foot reptile with a slender neck small head and cattle like limbs this curious creature remains relevant to this day as one of the contenders for the legend of the Loch Ness monster by the mid 1820s then Anning took over the family business as her skills in collecting and analyzing fossils matured soon she purchased a home and opened her own fossil shop called Anning's fossil depot by this point she was able to not only find and reconstruct fossils but also write about them and even create detailed drawings she had become in fact a truly professional paleontologist Anning's success and story that of a poor young uneducated woman doing the kind of work that many male scientists at the time weren't even qualified for earned her quite the reputation and in 1824 lady Harriet Sylvester the widow of a powerful government official in London visited Anning and was highly impressed the extraordinary thing in this young woman is that she's made herself so thoroughly acquainted with the science that the moment she finds any bones she knows what tribe they belong to Sylvester wrote in her diary she has arrived to that greater degree of knowledge as to be in the habit of writing and talking with professors and other clever men on the subject and they all acknowledge that she understands more of the science than anyone else in this kingdom not surprisingly this commendation is one of the only written mentions of Anning by her contemporaries after all the idea of a poor ignorant girl from a small town being so knowledgeable about a complex field of science was more than a little unnerving in a society 